So John, the viewers of my channel are all levels of skiers, okay? Uh, the inside leg driving is a, is a pretty advanced move, yet first day never evers to a degree can relate because you relate it to walking. Um, it's called stance and gait, and basically as the foot comes behind a, a given hip, like when you step down on it and pull it back, so you start this the, the stance phase, the big stance muscles all fire, and they're predominant, and the body senses stability. And then the other leg, the action it's going through, the foot retraction, think about running. Think about the inside part of your body, what it does to prepare, called right, for the next stance. So it's stance and gait moving forward. And that and both actions, both the action of the stance side and the gait side are basically what we're teaching to create a stronger dominant side and then be able to increase the edge angle to match the forces and to be able to actually add our physical force to bending the ski and controlling this controlling the radius so we're basically walking down the hill we are gs is just a little bit of knee work here it's not deep just a little knee work now we wanted to establish the strong side which is so i want to pull, have her pull her foot back and you'll find if you go from back and forth from a neutral position go to neutral and you'll feel mostly your uphill leg and, and hip when you pull that foot back you'll immediately as soon as you pull it back, you will definitely feel all the, or the majority of the weight being shifted to the downhill foot in that regard. Okay, so let's say we wanted to increase edge angle, which she goes ahead and do the knee and footwork. Okay, so just leave your left hip on the ground and lift your heel off the ground. Good. And then that's called, we call that chambering. That's axiom number four. So moving, and, and then it's a forward lunging action at the same time. There we go. So go ahead and flex. Now let's start with a deeper position now. Okay, now go ahead and do the knees. Now the foot. Now go into deeper flex. Okay, she's gonna get a little more range of motion. Okay, so basically we've changed base of support. We've changed the dominant side or the strong side. And we're creating more edge angle and we're creating more force through the ski. Instead of what we're doing is knee work initially and inside flexion foot being retracted but the knee going forward it's just a lunge but it's linear it's moving straight forward it's not moving back toward the gate so just do some knee work side to side okay so that's initial edging good okay now do some knee work and pull the foot back good and then knee work and foot back good and now go ahead and let's add some edge angles so inside heel would come off the ground. There we go, good. And so go ahead and just go straight run here for a bit. Okay. Straight run. And just move the knees, both of them together, in and out. No, no, just, no, open and close. There you go. But That's not very much, yeah, because it's not really, the band's not really quite tight enough for you. It should be a little tighter. But just so you can sense that abduction here, as well as the internal external rotators. Okay. Cool. Here. Excellent. Get into a little deeper position. Good, there we go. So when the knees are a little, when you have better flexion like that, it's easier to, to run the knees. The muscles that operate internal and external rotation don't have a lot of power, and they don't have any power when you're fully extended. Excellent. So it kind of goes knees, one, two, drop and drive. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it has, and I really, I obviously athletes that are good at things, they, they move them sequentially, you know, without any break, right? But sometimes when you're teaching it or talking about it, sometimes you need to kind of isolate. Okay, yeah. knee work, one, two. And I actually have people sometimes go one, two, three, four. One, you know what I'm saying? Just so that, so that they really do choreograph the movement. Above the turn, and it becomes the dominant ski, it's the uphill ski. And then it's the outside, and then hopefully for not very long, it's the downhill. So what is it? Why call it the outside ski? Why call it the downhill? Because it's gonna be three different, depending on phase, you're misdescribing so it. Strong so strong side means it that clear. it's strong side. Yeah, hopefully that is clear, okay. When you look at somebody who's a real good skier, they their body is to the inside of their feet, okay? And so they're-, they're But they're not inside, their base of support, That's which right. is perpendicular to the top sheets. Yeah. 
So that's the reason why, as a coach, I'm standing there, or as a teacher, you're standing there in, in zero, and they're, all this shit's going on. You go, oh my God, they're leaning this way and that way. And then, but then if you look at the, off their top sheets, are they or are they not? Yep. And, and we're trying to create the most natural, um, movement-based uh, skills to respond to stability and to basic control of space. Tell me what the band does for you. Uh, so the band is a sensory tool to help you feel where your knees are in relation to your hip. And the idea is to keep, always keep the band tensions because you want to keep your knees open, that'll keep the band tensions. When you roll over onto edge, you're supposed to roll over with your knees leading with your inside, that'll tension the band. Then when you pull your foot back, that'll tension the pan, bands linearly. And then when you chamber, that'll tension the bands like that. So it just teaches you, it tells you when you're in a good position. And if the band is ever loose, that means, you know, your knees are doing some- You, you really feel your muscles things. firing when you oh, yeah. when you stretch that, don't oh, you? Oh yeah. And you do that in the gym with the bands, with those videos you made, huh? it, Yes, you do sometimes. it's not a natural feeling, is it's it? It's not unnatural, no. Yeah. When you're, it honestly feels a lot tighter doing it right here than it does when you're skiing. When you're skiing, you don't really notice it, but your brain notices it. Yeah. 100%. Awesome. So you subconsciously notice the bands when you're skiing. I forgot to buckle my boots back up. Hey, you know what? Did you mean to do that with your boots on buckled? No. I was going to say something up above. At all times, all skiers of every level, they have two things in common. They're all trying to control space on the hill, like to objects and trees and gates and whatever, right? And also stability. If the body senses stability, right, then all of the neurological pathways are open and we move seamlessly through movements. And so by being in this position, you will, the, the body automatically will be free. It'll have freedom of movement, and, and, and both mental and physical. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to use that, that stance gate concept with the overview of controlling space and stability. Those are the, those are the driving forces of what we do every day.